Whether this is your first time to Disney World, or maybe you're like me and you've been going for over 20 years, selecting your Disney World Resort is so much fun, and it can really add to the overall experience of your vacation. So today, we'll take a look at some important things you might want to consider when picking the perfect Disney World Resort for your family. But first, hi, I'm Holly, and welcome to It's a Great Disney Day. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you know when I upload my weekly videos. And be sure to check us out on Facebook at It's a Great Disney Day. Disney has categorized their resorts based on price point. They have the deluxe villas and cabins, deluxe resorts, moderates, and value resorts. Even at the lowest price point, you won't be slumming it. At every Disney World resort, you'll get a highly themed experience, some good and some great food, and clean, well-appointed rooms. The main difference between all these different price categories will be the size of the rooms, mattress sizes, and the level of attention to detail, including the number of amenities. So when deciding which resort is right for you, here are some important factors to consider. One, the number of guests allowed per room. Two, the distance to the parks. Three, whether you'll need to cook your family's meals. And last but certainly not least is your budget. We will discuss each of these factors as we move through the four levels of Disney resorts. Let's get started in the highest price category. There are 14 options when it comes to deluxe villas. They're all connected to deluxe resorts except for Old Key West, and they offer one, two, and three bedroom suites that accommodate up to 12 people. The villas have full kitchens, living and dining rooms, a washer and dryer, and separate bedrooms. So if you're needing to do meal prep, the villas are going to be the next best thing to being home. The deluxe villas are connected to deluxe resorts, and there are nine deluxe resorts listed over on my It's a Great Disney Day Facebook page, so be sure to go over and check that out. Now, deluxe villas are going to be the best fit if you have more than six guests in your party. But here's a hack for those who need a full kitchen but don't have the budget to splurge on a villa. Consider staying at the cabins at Fort Wilderness. Now, it sounds a lot more rustic than it actually is. Take a look at them online. The vacation that my family stayed there is definitely our most memorable, and it's where we had the most fun. They only sleep six, but you'll have all the amenities of home similar to a villa for a couple of hundred dollars less per night. If the cabins are still too pricey for you, there are two other resorts in the value category that offer family suites that sleep six, but only have kitchenettes with small sinks, microwaves, and mini refrigerators. But on the upside, they do have two bathrooms and a private bedroom. So if you don't need a full kitchen, they may work for you. As wonderful as the deluxe resorts are, here's a reason you may want to downsize to a moderate resort. If you're going to be spending every day of your trip in the parks, you won't have time at your resort. The deluxe resorts offer a lot of activities and things to explore. So if you don't have the budget to stay long enough to enjoy the fancy resort you're paying big bucks for, you may want to consider focusing your time and budget in the parks and on activities in the Disney World area. I've stayed at Animal Kingdom before and wanted to sit on my balcony and drink coffee all day watching the giraffes, and I did not want to get up and go to the park. Just a little advice from me. Now, let's go on to the moderate resorts. Now, they still offer fantastic Disney detail in the rooms and in the resort atmosphere. They're worth spending some time exploring too, just like the deluxe resorts, but without having to pay the big bucks. Staying at a moderate resort will put you in close proximity to everything in Disney World unless you're staying at Coronado Springs. Moderate resorts also have an added bonus of multiple bus stops located around the perimeter of the resort. So you don't have to make a long trek to the bus stop like you have to at the value resorts. Most of the moderate resorts also have a second form of transportation. In addition to the buses, Port Orleans Riverside and French Quarter have water taxis that take you to Disney Springs. 
Caribbean Beach Resort has a Skyliner that transports guests to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. The cabins at Fort Wilderness have a water taxi that take you to Magic Kingdom. The only moderate resort that's an exception is, once again, Coronado Springs Resort. All moderate resorts accommodate a family of five, except for Port Orleans French Quarter. They only accommodate four. They have a mini fridge and coffee maker, which are standard in all Disney World rooms. If you need a microwave, you'll have to make the trek to the food court area. If your resort is literally going to be a place to lay your head at night, then you may want to dedicate less of the budget to lodging and opt for a value resort. These will be your least expensive options. The maximum number of guests per room is four, except for the all-star music and art of animation family suites. They're located just a little bit further from the parks than the moderate resorts, but they're clean, they have great pools, and pretty good food courts. But one thing you won't find here are sit-down restaurants, but they do have pool bars. The resorts accommodate a lot more guests than the moderate and deluxe resorts, so using bus transportation can be a wait at busy times of the day. The Art of Animation and Pop Century now have the Disney Skyliner as a form of transportation to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. So if you're staying at either of those, be sure to take advantage of the Skyliner to save time waiting in bus lines. So, which Disney resorts are your family's favorites? Or if you're planning your first trip, which one sounds like your best option? Leave a comment below or ask a question if you would like some advice from those in the know. Well, thanks so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. And if you feel like this video is helpful in planning a Disney World vacation, give me a thumbs up. Well, until the next video, wherever you may be, remember to make it a great Disney day. See ya. Before you go, be sure to visit the It's a Great Disney Day Facebook page to get a PDF of all the Disney World resorts, maximum guest number, and prices.